where they landed, and what they taught mankind. It even lists the names of 20 of the fallen angels. But as it pertains to the mystery schools, it is very interesting the kinds of things that these watchers taught humanity. It states, quote, Azazel taught them to make swords, knives, shields, and breastplates, and made known to them metals and the skill of working them for bracelets and jewelry. Azazel also taught the use of antimony for coloring the eyelids, along with all types of precious stones and dye formulas. From this arose great disobedience. They were led astray. They committed immorality. They became corrupt in all their ways. Semyaza taught cursing and root cutting. Armeros, curse lifting. Barakoyel taught star signs. Kokabel, star patterns. Ezekiel, cloud lore. Arakiel, land signs. Shamziel, sun signs. And Sariel, moon pathways. End quote. According to the Book of Enoch, this is the origin of the mystery schools. The fallen angels taught mankind weapon making and warfare, applying makeup and jewelry, introduced mankind to psychedelic drugs, vampirism, enchantments and cursings, as well as astrology. It is quite remarkable to see how much of what these watchers taught not only relate to the ancient mystery religions, but are common everyday things of the world we live in today. We even see the watchers teach mankind the art of abortion. Quote, the fifth was Kasdea. This is he who showed the Yaladim A'am all the evil strikings of unclean Rakim and demonic entities. He showed them the dashing of the embryo in the womb so that it would die. End quote. The Book of Enoch also states that the Watchers began to mix animals and humans together. Quote, they started to sin against birds, beasts, reptiles, fish, and then to devour one another's bodies, even drinking the blood. It was then the earth laid accusation against these lawless ones." End quote. The book of Jasher, another ancient text referenced several times in the Bible, which also records the nefarious acts of the fallen angels, confirms, quote, Then the sons of men began teaching the mixture of animals of one species with the other, in order therewith to provoke the Lord. End quote. This is extremely interesting because it is information which would have sounded absurd until the last half century. It is not talking about hybridization, but of creating creatures that go beyond their own kind as God created man, animals, and plants. This tells us a couple of things. One, that the technology they had was far greater than we can ever imagine. This is confirmed in the book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible where it states, quote, what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun." End quote. No matter how far we think we've come in the name of science and technology, it seems we are only catching up to what we were taught by these fallen angels in the antediluvian or pre-flood world. Two, the creatures we see in several ancient mythologies such as centaurs and minotaurs could all be attributed from what these fallen angels did on the earth. Steve Quayle, in his book Genesis 6 Giants, summarizes this idea, stating, quote, The collective memories in the form of myths, fables, and fairy tales from various cultures and ages of mankind are overwhelming evidence that the Nephilim existed, end quote. I believe that the antediluvian world of fallen angels, hybrids, warfare, Nephilim, astrology, advanced technology, and false spirituality is Atlantis. As theosophists and esoteric authors of the last century wrote how they believe the mystery schools began in Atlantis, I believe that the antediluvian world and the teachings of these fallen angels are the same thing. This makes sense to what the elite and secret societies are trying to do to forge a new world order today. Not only are they trying to rediscover Atlantis, but in doing so, they are merely attempting to fulfill the ancient hope which has been at work since the days of Adam and Eve, the earthly rule of the Antichrist. The truth certainly seems stranger than fiction. Jaded New Yorkers.
are scratching their heads. A mysterious silver shiny object or objects it seems floating in the sky yesterday. You can see all the people stopped in the street there in their tracks looking at it. Some folks say they saw lights. Others were maybe waiting for little green men to arrive. This has center bill a buzz tonight, a bright blue light spotted in the sky. And here's what you capture, this bright fiery light moving across the sky. Surveyors say they found what can only be described as the wreckage of a crashed spaceship. That's getting real bright. Stacey Gibson can't tell you what she captured on home video, but she can tell you she's never seen anything like that. and these lights dropped something as they hung low over the sky. Mike was in the Air Force and says the lights hovering in the sky were unlike any he had seen. One of the main topics of interest the New Age movement has harnessed through the infiltrating of the Truth Movement has been on the topic of UFOs and ETs. Many of these folks like David Wilcock, David Icke, Jordan Maxwell, and many others have in fact verified the concept that the UFO phenomenon is not necessarily flesh and blood beings, but are a race of highly evolved spiritual entities who have attained what we refer to as godhood and power over the elements of nature and physics of which we are currently limited to. This is eerily similar to the sacred promise given to the inner members of the New World Order. It is also the same concept being promoted by transhumanists and the road to attain singularity and human immortality through the use of technology in the field of biology and genetics. I believe that all of these various tentacles are leading to the same place and the same goal. 
More people today believe that there is life outside of Earth than ever before. A 2008 Scripps UFO poll conducted by Thomas Hargrove and Guido H. Stample showed that over 74% of 18 to 24 year olds believed it was likely that intelligent life exists on other planets. This is perhaps due to several factors including our current growth in scientific knowledge and understanding of the size and vastness of the universe but also the propaganda perpetuated by our media. Science fiction has exploded in America and the world as a staple theme for films, movies, books, and video games. Could this all be part of the plan to prepare the world for disclosure? I think the New Age, as well as the mainstream sort of media, and I mean like movies and television shows, and everybody's been shoving this alien UFO thing down our throats because it has so many uses for the Antichrist system. I've said many times, I don't know if this is the way that it will all be set up. It is just a really convenient way if it does go down like this because it does do three main things that are needed for the Antichrist system. Number one, it causes the world to reject God. Uh, we've been sold this erroneous idea that if aliens exist, then God doesn't. So the headlines the day after would read, you know, God proven wrong or whatever. The whole world would be united in its rejection of God overnight. So that certainly would play in, obviously, to the biblical account of this this uh, world order at the end of time. Also, we would believe ourselves to be God. This one would take a little bit longer to sink in, but the idea that aliens, in a real sort of evolution kind of way, just evolved, and that uh, you know that it could be sold to us that they were somehow our creator in the sense that they genetically modified us or they might have some excuse to the origin of life or something to that effect. Uh, ultimately, we would see them as gods in the sense of their perhaps abilities or their technological advancement. And it really depends on this point of how and what they say about us, if they say anything, or if in the discovering of them that uh, it is implied in some way that uh, that we ourselves could be like them and therefore like gods. And that really goes into the third part, which is the evolution. I think that this concept of evolution is crucial to so much of what the Antichrist system does, especially the, the genocide based on belief system that happens in the end uh, time scenario, uh, really requires, as it did in the Third Reich, uh, an idea of evolution. There was a, there's a concept that, um, you know, there's certain people that are not uh, fit for the new, the new system, the new evolution. They were, they, they were sort of helping humanity evolve by the elimination of those that weren't ready for the new age, the new world. Uh, Hitler believed in the fifth root race of Blavatsky, but yet I think this new system is going to have a very unique version of evolution. And of course, the appearance of aliens really validates that on a worldwide scale. No longer do you have to you know, have this sort of underground preaching of theosophy as it was in, in Hitler's time, but rather the whole world is united in this understanding or perceived understanding of potential evolution coming. After all, the aliens are here. We can be like them. They just simply evolved like we have the potential to do. We can become like them. We can communicate telepathically or whatever as long as we are willing to take that next step. And there's this great precipice that we're you know now at this able this ability to move to this next level but it's all going to be in the context of you know god has just recently been disproven but yet there will be people on earth that can't quite go with the new system because they're stuck in the old paradigm of god does exist and the bible was accurate and these aliens are a deception those people will be presented as enemy number one and and will be viewed as the thing that's holding us back from the potential evolution UFOs and ETs in the Bible? Interesting question. Uh, we got to define our terms right. a little bit, I think, right? So, uh, in as far as there were sons of God coming down, there were demons coming down, then yes, there are aliens, because the demons of yesterday are today's aliens. That's really the bottom line. Uh, there are not aliens from some distant galaxy or from the Pleiades system or anything like that. They are very much from here, they're demonic, and 